So on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable duck that can also be used as a Christmas tree ornament. If you want to make the larger duck, there's also a separate video tutorial that shows you how to make this larger duck. This is the male duck. And then I also made the female duck. So if you want to make your own eyes for the larger duck, I show how you can make your own eyes if you don't want to use the safety eyes. And then I also show how to make the sailor hat. And you can make the same sailor hat in a different color with a flower for the female if you want. So again, there's a separate video tutorial for the larger duck. And this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little cute duck. For this crochet project, you're going to need your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook along with a darning needle or tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I used is the color Daffodil and it's by Red Heart with Love Premium. You'll only need, you'll have plenty. I'm using some of my leftover yarn, but here's some information about this yarn. And again, the color is Daffodil. Now the bottom portion, I'm going to be using the yellow yarn, but if you want an alternative look with the, it looks like water, then you would use the blue colored yarn, and the blue that I chose is Blue Hawaii. And this color is by Red Heart with Love Premium. And again, the color is Blue Hawaii. The orange color that I used is by Impeccable. So this is the same orange that I used for the larger ducks. And this is called Orange Crush. So we're going to start with the head of the duck. So you're going to start with your yellow colored yarn. And we're going to start with a magic circle, so just drape the yarn across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Wrap it around twice, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle finger, and you're going to bring up a loop. And then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you take your forefinger and thumb and you hold the base of the six single crochet. You have these two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing, so just pull it shut. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed. You can close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're going to turn your work, and it's going to look like a circle. You're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch. Make sure you get under both loops of that first stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So there's one, two, and then just turn your work, go into the next stitch, and you're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. And then you're going to come back. Now you should have a total of 12 stitches in the round. And you can see how there's an opening in the center. So this is why it's called the magic circle because you can just turn it over pull on that loose yarn in and it magically closes that center for you. And then you just turn your work and now we're going to continue with two more increase rounds which means we're going to be increasing 
the number of stitches for the next two rounds. So go ahead and get your yarn marker and I just use one of my scraps of yarn. Place it right where you left off and for the first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and for this increase round you're going to be making one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so now you should have a total of 24 stitches in the round and now we're going to maintain that number of stitches as we crochet and we're not going to be removing the yarn marker except for this first time because we want to keep track of the rounds so for the next four rounds you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around and when you get back to the yarn marker you should still have a total of 24 stitches and then just leave the yarn marker in place and continue making one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of four rounds. So now this is how your work should look and you should have finished one, two, three, four rounds. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then you can set this aside for now. We're going to make the beak. So go ahead and get your orange colored yarn and I'm going to show you how to make the beak. So the first thing we're going to make is the strip of the beak that goes just above the beak portion. So you're going to take and fold your orange yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Now you're going to make a chain of eight. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew this portion onto the duck's head. So this is the first part of the beak. Go ahead and set that aside for now. And now we're going to be making the second part of the beak. Now these two pieces you're going to be making the same way. So for the first portion you're going to yarn over to form your loop. Not yarn over but fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. So now you're going to make a chain of five. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, four, and five. Now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. So go into that second chain, bring up a loop, and then complete a single crochet. So just yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. Go into the next 
stitch, bring up a loop, and complete a single crochet, and the next stitch, single crochet, and then the next stitch. So you should have a stitch count of four now. One, two, three, four. So stitch count of four. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and that first chain one is going to count as your first stitch for this last row. So you're not going to go into the base of that first chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then in the last stitch you're going to bring up a loop and then make your last single crochet. So again you're going to have a stitch count of four, that first chain one, two, three, and four. Oh, actually go ahead and undo that last single crochet. So you have three single crochet, three stitches I mean, the first chain one is one, two, and three. Now in the last stitch you're not going to make a single crochet, you're actually going to make a slip stitch. So go into that last stitch, and then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you can see how it just kind of makes a curved appearance. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and then just pull a little bit of yarn through that you'll need to help sew. So it also helps to bury the loose yarn end too. So you're going to need two of these. Go ahead and make one more. So now you should have your three pieces for your beak. Go ahead and take those two last two pieces that you made and you're going to take the long end that you left for sewing on one of them and then put it onto your tapestry needle. And then you're going to want to take the other portion and make sure that you take the two curved portions and place them so that the curved portion faces the same direction. And then you're going to sew the opposite side. So you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to go right into the opposite side of the curved portion and you're going to sew the two stitches on the end together. So you just go in and out sewing the opposite end of the curved portion of the beak, sewing the two pieces together. Now for mine, this is what it looks like. I have the two, the beak portion, and I had two long ends that I left for sewing, so I have those for sewing the beak in place, but you also have some short loose yarn ends. You can take those short loose yarn ends, put them onto your tapestry needle, and then go ahead and bury those along the back. So I kind of just weaved those short loose yarn ends along the back of the beak just to bury them. And then you can go ahead and trim those. So now I have my beak and the back portion of the beak. I'm going to set those aside for now. I'm going to bring back the head. And I'm going to place the loop where we left off towards the back of the head. And I'm going to place the eyes on the front of the head. The safety doll eyes that I used are 10 millimeter. These are by Fab Lab. So these are 10 millimeter safety doll eyes and they have the plastic backing. I like the plastic backing or the metal backing best. They seem to be the most secure to me. I used the magic circle at the top of the head as a landmark and then I counted down one, two, three rounds and I placed the safety doll eye so that the top of the safety doll eye is just under that third round. Then I placed the other safety doll eye so that it's also 
the top of it is just under the third round and I have about two stitches between the safety doll eyes. Then you can take the safety latch and place it right onto the back. Then you're going to take your first portion of the beak, which is that flat chain that you made, and we're going to center it, so make sure that you find the center. So after you find the center, you want the center to be in between the eyes. So about midway in between. Then you can take your tapestry needle or darning needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing. Line up the edge along the bottom round of the head where you finished off and just kind of go in and out and sew it in place. and kind of curve it upwards. As you sew. And then make sure that it's even on both sides and that you have it centered as you sew it in place. So this is what the top portion of the beak looks like after I sewed it in place and I just tied a knot on the inside and then just trimmed it. Then you're going to take the beak portion and you're going to take the long end that you left for sewing or the same colored yarn. And then you're going to take and line up the beak portion just under the center of the strip that you sewed on and then sew that portion in place. So just go in and out. Make sure you have it lined up and then you just take and sew the beak portion in place. So you just go in and out. Make sure you have it centered. And then you still want that curve towards the top, so make sure that you don't hide the curved portion. So I'm just going in and out, sewing the beak in place. And this is what it looks like when I'm finished. And now we're ready to finish closing the head. So now you're going to go into the back of the head where you left off, place your yarn marker, and then we're going to make a decrease round. So we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round to start closing the head. So for the first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together or make your decrease stitch. So you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. So now you have two loops on your crochet hook. Go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. And then you have three loops on your crochet hook. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three loops for your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I'm going to make one more set with you. So one single crochet into two stitches. And then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round and you can go ahead and get your craft stuffing and you can start stuffing the head as you close.
So for the next increase round, I mean not increase round, decrease round, you're going to take and move your yarn marker up and for this decrease round you're going to be making one single crochet into one stitch and then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So you can kind of see how I'm holding my fingers as I make my stitches. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then you're going to single crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you can see how it's getting smaller. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker and you're just going to make single crochet two stitches together until you're almost closed and then we're just going to slip stitch the rest closed. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this with you. You can see how I hold my fingers and make the stitches back up a little bit. And I already have the amount of stuffing that I want in mine. You can add more craft stuffing if you need to. So after I get to the back of the head, I'm going to go ahead and start slip stitching the rest and my finger will no longer fit to help stabilize. So now you can just skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then just bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're just going to slip stitch the rest of the head closed. And I've already closed. I'm going to make one more stitch here. Slip stitch. And then I'm going to finish off. It's completely closed. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. This just helps to keep the work from coming undone by having your loose yarn end. So now I'll go ahead and get your tapestry needle and I'll show you how to bury the loose yarn end. So I just take my tapestry needle or darning needle and just put it right onto the loose yarn end. And then just go right where you tied your knot and just come out anywhere. Pull that loose yarn end and then you can trim it. And then that buries it on the inside of your work. So now we're going to make the body of the duck. You can set your cute little duck head aside. So here you can see that the little duck head that I made is even a little smaller than my previous little duck. It's really cute. But with this duck, I used a different yarn. So sometimes yarn choice can also affect the size of your duck. And then you could go a little higher on your crochet hook size, or so 4mm will also work. And all that will do is just make a slightly larger little duck as well. So for the body, go ahead and get your yellow colored yarn and we're going to start with the magic circle again. So you're going to drape the yarn around your middle fingers twice. This is how I'm holding my work. And we're going to start with the slip knot. So again, we did this for the head. And then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle just like we did for the head. I'm just going to go ahead and do this with you because when I skip ahead some people get confused. So again we already did this for the head but you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle and then we're going to go ahead and close it and then just turn your work and again you're going to be placing two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch around which will give you a total stitch count of 12. And again, 
we had made the head or started the head the exact same way. Now we want the body to be a little bit larger so on the head remember we increased to two and then made two single crochet into the third stitch. For the body we're going to be increasing to three for those of you that already know how to increase. So I'm going to start with the beginners. So you're going to take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off and we're going to be working in chronological order all the way up to one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. So for your first increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total stitch count of 18 in the round. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up for the next increase round. And for those of you who, um, as far as the stitch count, all you have to do is add six to your previous count and that will, should be what your stitch count be for, should be for the next round because we started with the magic circle with six single crochet so it's multiple of six. So for this next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then the last increase round is going to be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 30 total stitches in the round. So go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. After you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then you're just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you have an option. On video tutorial I'm going to be making this bottom portion in yellow. So if you like the blue Hawaii color then you would use your blue Hawaii colored yarn but on video tutorial I'm going to be making the bottom portion with the yellow yarn. So for now, go ahead and set your body portion aside and then grab either your blue Hawaii if you're making a blue bottom portion or your yellow portion if you want it just like mine on video. So the first thing you're going to do is start with your magic circle. So now you should be a pro at your magic circle for holding it. And again, you're going to make your slip knot first and then you're also going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. And then you're going to close it the same way. And again, you're going to be making two single crochet in every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. And again, you're going to be making three increase rounds the exact same way that we did for the body, starting the body. So you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around. For the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. Then the last increase round is one single crochet into three stitches 
and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so now I have 30 stitches in the round you can go ahead and remove your yarn marker and then just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over so just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch so now we're going to make the shell portion that goes all the way around the circle. The first thing you're going to do is chain one. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then in the same stitch you're going to make a half double crochet. So you just yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then you're going to make a double crochet in the same stitch. So you yarn over, go in the same stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. You have two remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. So now you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch to, sh to start the shell. So go into the next stitch over, make a single crochet, and then you're going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So you yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, make a half double crochet, Then you're going to make a double crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into the same stitch. So now you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. You're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch to start the shell. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around and you can see how it makes a little ripple effect around. So go ahead, finish making your shells all the way around and then come back. So for mine, I have 10 waves or shells all the way around. I finished my last shell and single crochet. So now I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch or the chain that I made, chain one. So make a slip stitch and then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So go ahead and yarn over and make sure you pull enough yarn through to sew this onto your little duck. I find that leaving a long yarn end just helps to make it more secure because the yarn is actually attached and not tied into a knot. But you could also just do a short one if you wanted to and then sew it on with the same colored yarn. So now we're going to get the craft stuffing and then sew on the bottom portion of your duck. So I have my craft stuffing but I'm going to set that aside for now because I want to start sewing and then once I'm closer to getting finished sewing the bottom onto the bottom of the body then I'll start putting the stuffing in. It just makes it easier to sew. So the first thing that I do is make sure that you have the wrong side which is the side with your loose yarn end towards the inside of the body and that any loose yarn ends are on the wrong side. Then you can take and tie the loose yarn ends together so I have my long end that I have for sewing and the loose yarn end on the body that I'm going to tie together. And 
and then I'm going to get my tapestry needle. So now I'm just going to bring my tapestry needle through to the right side, from the wrong side to the right side, right at the base of one of the shells. And then I have that loose yarn end on the wrong side. I'll put that towards the inside of the body. And you want to line up the shell, the bottom of the shell, with the bottom of the body. So you line that up, and then you're just going to sew, go right in the bottom of the shell, and go into the bottom row of the body. And then you're going to sew the bottom of the body to the um, top portion of the body. And then you're going to come back through that bottom row of the body, the top portion of the body, and come back through the bottom of the shell. And you're going to sew it this way all the way around until you're almost closed because you want to make sure that you add your stuffing before you completely close the finish sewing the bottom of the body to the top portion of the body. So go ahead, finish sewing the bottom portion of the body to the top portion of the body, and then come back. So now you can see how I have the body, the bottom of the body sewn on the top of the body and I have a little bit of an opening. I'm going to go ahead and take my craft stuffing and put it right into the body. Make sure you have as much stuffing as you want into the body. And then you can take and fold up and continue sewing, the rest of it closed, so I keep going under the shell as I sew, And then you can decide if you want to sew down the shells. For mine, I went ahead and sewed the shells down. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So then, after you've sewn the top portion of the body onto the bottom portion of the body, then you can take and sew down the, cell the shells to the body. So I just go in and out sewing the shell to the body itself. So you just have to be careful with the design. You don't want to make too large of a stitch when you're sewing on the showing on the right side on the wrong side you can make a larger stitch because nobody's going to see it so you can see how I have a small stitch on the outside but on the inside I have a larger stitch so again I'm on the outside again so I'm just going to go in just a stitch over and then come out on the opposite shell So go ahead, finish sewing your bottom portion in place. And then when I'm finished, I just take and tie a knot on the bottom where I finished.
And then you can take and just bury your loose yarn end. And now you're ready to sew the head onto the body. So for mine, I just placed the head where I wanted it, and mine is right on top of pretty much near the magic circle. Just placed it right on there. And then I just take the same colored yarn, and then I go up through the body and the head with my tapestry needle. And again, you want to leave a loose yarn end for sewing. I go back through the head with my tapestry needle, about a stitch over, and then come out right near where I first went in so I can tie a knot. So now I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. Then you can take and finish sewing the head in place. So I'm going to go right through where I tied a knot, go up into the head, again I want to make sure I position the head where I want it, and then I'm going to go right back through the head, down into the body. And you can go across to the opposite side too, if you want. And then I'm just going to make sure my head is where I want it. And then you just go right through the body, back up into the head, and you just keep repeating that all the way around until the head is secure on the body. And this is what my duck looks like so far, really cute. Now, before I show you how to make the feet, I'm going to show you how to make the little loop that goes on top of the head. So now, just take the top of the duck's head with your crochet hook, and you're going to take a stitch right behind the magic circle. And then you're going to bring up a loop with your same colored yarn as the, as the duck, the main color. And then you're just going to yarn over and go through that loop for a little knot. And then just kind of cinch that knot down and then tie another knot with the other loose yarn end. Just tie two of them. Then you're going to make a chain of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into that same loop that you created. So just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to tie a knot. Yeah, kind of looped myself there. I'm going to redo that. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. And then just bring enough yarn through to tie a knot and bury into your work. And then you're just going to take your loose yarn ends and bury them into the head. So you can see how you have a nice little loop for hanging if you want to make it into a little ornament. Or you just want to hang it on your keychain, whatever you want to do. Then just take and bury those loose yarn ends right where you tied your knot. Just go through and then just bury the loose yarn ends in your work.
Now I'm going to show you how to make the little tiny duck feet. So you're going to take your orange colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop and then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then you're going to make a chain of five. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one, two, three, four, five. So you, now you have a chain of five. You're going to go into the second chain from the hook. Bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. So that will be your first stitch. Go into the next stitch. Bring up a loop for your second single crochet. Next stitch for your third single crochet. And then the last stitch for your fourth single crochet. Then you're just going to turn your work. You're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. So there's one. Go into the next stitch for your second stitch and then the next stitch for your third single crochet. And now you have three stitches in the row. Then turn your work. Go into the next stitch. Make a single crochet. Go into the next stitch and make your second single crochet. So now you have two stitches in the row. Go ahead and turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then you finished your little triangle. Go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the two triangles together. Now make one more of these. So now you should have two triangles and you're going to lay the two triangles on top of each other and you're going to get one of your long loose yarn ends that you left for sewing and put it onto your tapestry needle or just get the same colored yarn to sew. And then you're going to sew, this is where we finished off the two tips of the triangle. You're going to take the tapestry needle and then sew the edge of the two triangles together. And then you're just going to sew back and forth, sewing the two edges together, creating a ridge down the center of the duck foot. So you can see how far down I went to sew the two edges together, because you do want a ridge for the right side of the duck foot. And then I just went right back to where I started. And then I just tied a knot when I got to the end. Just tie a knot with the loose yarn end on the end. And then you can open up the triangles. So this is the wrong side, and then the right side has the ridge. And so this is... So now, this portion will be sewed to the under the duck. This will face up, so you have the ridge, and then this portion, the wider portion, will face forward. So now what you can do is take those loose, smaller loose yarn ends, and just bury them under the foot, not the part that's showing, which is the ridged portion. Just go under the foot and then just kind of weave those loose yarn ends into the under portion of the foot. And then you can cut them. So just the smaller loose yarn ends because you're going to use your longer loose yarn ends to sew the feet 
onto the duck. So now you want to position your duck feet where you want them under the duck. And remember the ridged portion will be facing up. And then the points of the triangle will be facing towards the back of the duck. And then I position mine using the magic circle on the bottom of the body. I counted one, two rounds up and then positioned my duck feet and sewed them in place. And this is what the duck feet look like after I'm finished. Here's a close-up showing the magic circle and then the two rounds and then I sewed just the back portion of the duck feet on. So those are the two options. You can make your duck with the duck feet or you can make the duck with the blue water and they both are just really adorable.